Hi, good afternoon. My name is Nicole Colette. This is an interview from Avenues International. We are here at the Penavi National Congress in Bogota, Colombia. Here next to me is David Swem. He is a specialist in pathology and poultry. Thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure and thank you for the opportunity thank. to come and talk. <laughs> thank you, David. So, you have a conference here uh, about avian influenza, no? I gave a lecture yesterday about avian influenza globally, yes. Well, we want to ask you some questions about this conference, for example. Uh, the first question is about uh, what are the main transmission mechanisms uh, with this avian influenza virus between uh, wild and commercial birds? So it depends on each individual farm, but there are two main ways the virus goes from wild birds to poultry. Most of our farm birds are, of course, housed indoors. And the most common way is it's being tracked in as virus on what we call fomites. It could be on your shoes, your clothes, your boots, or equipment that you use between the outside and the inside. And the other way is if you have many outbreaks in a very close area, it could be some airborne transmission. Those are really the two main ways. And for example, what is the impact of this virus yeah. uh, in poultry? So the virus we're facing today really kind of emerged in the fall of 2020. And since that time, uh, across Asia, Europe, Africa, North and South America, we've had over 50 million poultry who died and over 300 million poultry that have been culled just to control the disease. And the other sad thing is that many different wild bird species have been infected, including many wonderful birds that migrate long distances that are uh, seabirds like terns. And so there's been a huge impact on their populations from this virus. And for example, the other question is, uh, what do you recommend to prevent this virus? So, you know, every poultry farmer and all the workers need to practice the best biosecurity. And that biosecurity is a barrier to keep the virus from entering the barns. You know, we even can be sometimes complacent about how we do things, but that cannot be overemphasized that everyone is critical in this process. Of course, in some countries uh, where biosecurity has not been fully successful, they've actually undergone the vaccination of poultry to make them resistant to the virus in case something gets through the biosecurity. Okay, in this line, uh, what is the importance of vaccination? So, you know, vaccination has been practiced in multiple countries around the world. Uh, in uh, Latin America, we have six countries that have been practicing vaccination against this H5N1 high path virus. And each of the countries decides on how that vaccination program is done, what types of vaccines are the most important, and what kinds of poultry are usually vaccinated. Most of the countries in Latin America are vaccinating breeders and layers because they're the most susceptible. Rollers are not really being vaccinated against this H5N1 here. Okay. And for example, uh, what do you think about to the education uh, in farmers, no? for example, to prevent this virus harm uh, in terms of biosecurity? Yeah, so um, education programs are very important uh, to the farmers. Uh, in the United States, most of our integrated companies have training programs that they have the farmers come to. They, they train the farmers and their workers on, you know, what is influenza or what is another infectious virus that infectious bronchitis. And what can you do in your job to keep it from coming in? Things like, you know, you change out of your clothes from home to come to work. When you get to work, you put on specific clothes just for the farm and different shoes for the farm. They stay on the farm. When you leave, you change back into your home clothes. And when you bring things in from the outside into the chicken house, like new equipment, you would clean and disinfect it before coming in, bring it in, just in case there might have been an infected wild bird that landed on it and left fecal material or respiratory secretion in the virus. Those are just a couple of examples of biosecurity measures. Okay, perfect. Uh, we finished uh, the, in this case in terms of biosecurity. And uh, we want to know what do you think uh, the, about this virus in Latin America? So, uh, the, the partially good news is that the number of cases in Latin America of this virus in both wild birds and backyard poultry, commercial poultry, have greatly declined in 2024. And so the commercial poultry case has only been one in South America, that was in Peru in January, and there have been no other commercial outbreaks. So that's very good news, and hopefully that trend will continue with no more cases of commercial birds and fewer cases of wild birds, and hopefully that will uh, be the end of a episodic case. And for example, uh, what countries do you think are the more critical? 
So, of course, countries that uh, raise a lot of poultry for export, they have a critical uh, market need to me, so they want to make sure their poultry are even influenza free. So their trading partner, the importing country, will accept those. So those are really, you know, probably very critical to this. But also what's really very, very important for each individual country is to make sure that their citizens have access to very nutritious uh, poultry eggs, chicken eggs, as well as meat that is safe for them to consume. And, and sometimes uh, that just needs to be emphasized to the farmers to practice better biosecurity so they don't have the infections and that keeps inexpensive uh, poultry products in the market for the nutrition of their families. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Do you want to say something more about uh, this topic? No. No? I think okay. we covered it. <laughs> perfect. Thank you so much. You're very David. welcome. I think you had the right question. So. They're all good. All right.